In this video, we're going to explore the question, what is the slope of the sine function? And we're going to do it without all of the usual machinery of calculus. So to begin, let's actually graph f of x equals sine x. I'll tap the graph function tool. I'll tap to place this function. And now I'll double tap the function to change it to sine x. If we ask students, what is the slope of this function, they might think that's a very strange thing for us to be wondering about, because after all, don't just lines have slopes? What does it mean to find the slope of something other than a line? If we discuss this for a while, students will often suggest that maybe we can at least create a secant line on this graph and Maybe that secant line can tell us something about the slope. We do, after all, know how to find the slopes of lines. So let's do that. I'll tap on the line tool, and we see a preview of the line we're about to construct. One of its points is glowing, indicating that we need to place it. I'm going to attach this point to my graph by tapping anywhere here along it. Now the other point that defines the line is glowing, and let's attach that to the graph as well. Now both of these points, when we drag them, move along the function. So we have ourselves a secant line. So if I ask students now, with this given secant line, whether this line's slope in any way represents the slope of the sine function, they say, no, not really. This does not represent the slope of the sine function, and certainly it doesn't because these two points are not even close to each other. They're just random points on our graph. So let's move these points a little bit closer. And at this location here where these two points are fairly close, students begin to realize that, well, that slope of this line actually does tell us something about the slope of the sine function, at least in this area right here. So what happens now if we drag this line itself as it moves along the graph? Well, we see that the line doesn't always have the same slope. Sometimes it's negative, and sometimes it's positive. So to get some more information about this, we are going to measure its slope. And before we even do that, we can ask students, what do you think the largest slope of this line is? What do you think the smallest slope is? And where along this graph do those minimum and maximum values occur? So to get some more data, we will now actually find the slope of this line. I'll tap on this tool, and I see a preview of a line, and its slope, and the line is glowing. And that's indicating that I need to place this line. Well, since I'd like to measure the slope of the secant line, I'll tap the secant line to attach those two lines together. So now we see the slope of line AB right here. And if I drag the line as I did before, we can see how the slope value changes. Well, now I'd like to get a better sense of the slope. So I'm going to actually graph it. And I'm going to start by measuring the x value, the abscissa of point A. So I'll tap on the Measure Abscissa tool. And here we have our point A and its x value. And I'm going to tap here on the point A that's on my graph to merge them together. So here we see the x value of point A. And that value changes as we drag the line. Now what I'd like to do is plot the point whose x value is the x value of point A and whose y value is the slope of AB. So to do that, I'll use the point plot point tool. I'll tap on that tool and we see a preview of an x value, a y value, and that point defined by the x and y. So the x value of the point that I would like to graph is the x value of point A. So I'll tap directly on this to merge those two values together. The y value of my point is the slope of the line. So I'll tap on the slope 
just merge those two together. And here we have our point. Its x value is the x value of point A, and its y value is the slope of this line. So now we can drag this line as we've done before, and we can observe this point as we drag the line to see its location. But it's fairly choppy to drag this. So let's make something a little bit smoother here by creating an animate button that will move all of this smoothly. I'll tap on animate two points and I'm going to be animating points A and B so they move along my function. I'll attach this first glowing point to A and the second glowing point to B. And here we have our animate points button. And if I tap it, we see that it moves our secant line smoothly along f of x equals sine of x. And we see this point here plotting our, what we presume to be the slope of f of x equals sine x. So I'm going to tap this button again to stop the animation. And two things I'll do. One is I'm going to move these points even closer together to get a better approximation of the slope. And the second thing I'll do is to trace this point so we can see the path that it leaves behind. Mm -hmm. So I'll tap on the trace widget and then I'll tap on this point to trace it. And now let's animate again. And as we form the trace, we can ask students if this looks like a function that's familiar to them. And again, to be thinking about its minimum and maximum values and where those occur, and also things like where is the slope equal to zero, and does that make sense based on what you see of the graph? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop the animation again and think about how can we get an even better approximation of the slope? And it would seem like if we could get points A and B really, really close together, it would be a better approximation. And maybe the best approximation of all if points A and B coincided. Well, I can't drag these to be at the exact same location, but one thing I can do, and let me just erase traces here, is I can create a movement button to move these two points to the exact same location. So I'll tap on this tool, and it gives me a preview of two points and a move button that will move one point to the other. So the two points that I want to move together are A and B. So let's see our super great approximation of slope by moving those points together, and let's watch what happens. Whew, what happened? Our line went away. And when I think about that, hmm, I realize, oh, a line is composed or defined by two points. And if I no longer have two points, if they're at the exact same location, I no longer have a line. So to make my approximation really, really good, I want point A and B to be super close together, but not at the same location. And that's going to be hard to do just by dragging the points to make those points infinitesimally close. But I can do that with a more algebraic approach. And that's what we're going to see in the next blog post and the next video.